Good morning. Welcome back to the kitchen. Now, some of y'all have been along for the kitchen tour that I did. Got my same apron on. Uh, and you saw the beginnings of the prep for cooking some hominy. So I'm going to bring y'all over here to the butcher block and show you what I'm doing to get ready to cook. I got this, I got two gallon cans of hominy and I freeze dried, drained it, freeze dried one of them. But it is like powdery dust. I mean, I, I don't think I'll enjoy that. So I'm not going to do the other gallon. So I'm going to cook it and uh, I'll share it with somebody that likes hominy and we'll eat what we want of it. But uh, I didn't like hominy till I learned how to season it and make it taste good. So y'all come on over here to the butcher block and we're going to make some hominy. And if you'll try it, you can get you a little can and just proportion your seasoning and see if you don't like it. Come on over here, get your spot, and uh, I'm all ready Already to Already started getting my bell pepper ready to uh, use, but I'm going to show y'all something that I learned. If you cut a little off of the bottom and save that, little off of the top and you want to save that to chip up and use. Then you have this open pepper here. So what you want to do is cut down through the side and then kind of open that up. And you want to start cutting around like this and you can cut most of the spine out as you go. And then you just have this open Thing laying down that you can uh, use. I just love to do it that way. Let me throw this away and I'll be right back over here. Now I just shake my seed off. Now this is ready to just cut in strips. And like if I don't want that on there, I can always trim it off. I just cut it in strips and then cut it into little little pieces to put into my um, whatever I'm using it for. And I don't know that I'll use all of this in the hominy, but it needed to be something done with it because it was getting overripe. They had them on sale and I bought several and I just hadn't used them all yet. I'm going to finish getting the bell pepper ready. I'm going to chop uh, some uh, yellow onion and uh, first off I'm going to cut up this bacon and I'm going to um, brown it off in the skillet, add my onions and bell peppers and cook them just a little bit, and then I'm going to add my hominy and cook it until it's all seasoned and good. So I've showed y'all before, but what I do on my bacon, I have kitchen shears, and these came from Pampered Chef, but you can get your own brand from wherever. And I just snip my bacon like this with the scissors, and then when you put it in the skillet, it comes all, you know, it pops apart. And I've got green food coloring on my hands because I combined some bottles to make room. So I'm going to, I'm just showing y'all what I'm doing. I'm going to get all of this prepped. And I'll show you how I do the onion here in a minute. But I'm going to get the bacon in the skillet and let it start cooking. And then we'll be right back. Okay, I've got all of my prep done here. I've uh, got my bacon cooked crisp. And I'm taking it out, so in the bacon grease, I'm going to saute my vegetables, some green onions, white onions, red and green bell, until they're tender. And then we'll get the hominy in. I have some um, hatch peppers that I, they were smoked, roasted, that I bought at HEB. Remember I told y'all I bought 25 pounds two different times, and I freeze dried them. So I'm going to put some hatch peppers in over here where my vegetables are sautéing. I have some hatch peppers in my hominy for flavor. I love the roasted green, hatch green peppers. Okay, I've okay, got everything sautéing in the skillet and you can see the darker green is the hatch. They'll rehydrate while, they, uh, while the others are sautéing. If you don't have a hatch or roasted hatch or you don't want to buy you a can of hatch green chilies, you could buy a poblano pepper or two and roast it in your oven and um, put it in here or a jalapeno or even your bells. You can roast them to give them that. Okay, I'm going to add my bacon back in. And then I'm going to um, start adding the hominy. And 
And I'm going to try to just rake it out of the can because even though I tried to drain it, I see quite a bit of juice in it and I really would rather not have that in here. So let me finish getting the hominy in and I'll be back. I'm going to add a few shakes of Tony Sacherets in there. I'm going to add some onion powder. Even though I put onion in it. I just like it as rich with flavor as I can get it. So let me get some garlic powder in it. I'm using granulated garlic and granulated onion. I call it onion powder, but I don't really like the powdery mix. So that there goes some garlic in. I'm going to put a little bit of parsley flakes just for a little bit more color. And I'll give this a quick stir and let it simmer a while and I'll bring you back. I'm not going to actually plate this because I'm going to use it for supper tonight along with whatever else I decide to fix. But I wanted to show y'all the method for fixing it. And um, you could do whole kernel corn like this and it makes a yummy, yummy side dish. Of course, hominy is made from corn. But this is a different way to use it and if you don't use hominy on a regular basis, it's just a different side to have once in a while. We don't have hominy real often, but when we do have it, this is how I fix it, and it's very, very Thank good. Thank y'all again for coming into the kitchen and spending time with me this morning. I hope you'll try this hominy and um, give your family something different to eat. Now, if y'all don't, if your bunch doesn't like bell peppers and all the stuff I put in it, just season it with onion and garlic powder and your bacon, and it's delicious like that. Or you can even, even use butter instead of bacon. I have some friends that they won't cook bacon in their house. They have to go cook it outside because they don't want their house to smell like bacon. Well, let me tell you folks something. I live in a country house in the country, and to me, if I walk in and somebody's cooked bacon, it smells like home to me. Uh, my Aunt Helen and Uncle Buster would kill their own hogs, and Uncle Buster had a smokehouse, and Good grief, that just smells like going to Aunt Audrey's or Aunt Helen's house. My dad's sister, Aunt Audrey, they did the same thing, and I've never minded smelling bacon in the house. Now, if I was going to have a, a tea party with ladies here, I wouldn't cook bacon before they came, obviously. But, that being said, when I cook, I season with bacon, and so I cook it right here where I can use that bacon grease to season what I'm cooking. So y'all just do whatever you want to do. That's how I do it at my house. But you can use uh, butter instead of bacon, and it'll season it really well, and uh, that's an alternative. Now let me tell y'all again about those devices you've got. <clears throat> Somebody commented because I said turn your junk off. Well, junk is stuff that gets in the way when you're trying to do something that needs to be done. So I think those devices would qualify under the uh, definition of junk because if you're sitting there doing this and you barely make eye contact when somebody speaks to you, that's junk. You need to learn to communicate with people and give them eye contact and give them your undivided attention. Whether it be your child, someone else's child, your parent, Give people your attention. Give them the courtesy of looking them in the eye and sharing conversation with them. I'm going to tell you something. If I try to tell my anybody, if I say, hey, I want to tell you something, and they look up, huh, and they back down here, I just hush. If I'm not worth turning that mess off to listen to, you don't need conversation with me, obviously. You don't need the knowledge I was fixed to impart to you that I thought was important. Now, turn that stuff off and talk to people and make memories with your family. That's important. It hurts when you try to talk to somebody and they don't have time for you, especially if they're sitting at your own dinner table or in your own living room. Y'all need to pay a little bit of attention to the people around you and turn your devices off and give them some one-on-one. -on -one. A little bit will go a long ways. They'll feel like that you care about them. 
and it'll nurture your family relationships and, and it'll encourage your kiddos to confide in you. But if they come up and say, Mama, and you're like this, and you say, what? Mama, I wanted to talk to you about, so well, what is it? They're not going to open up to you. So when you have problems with them later on, look back over your shoulder at how you ignored them at a time when they needed you. Turn them off. Spend some time with your family. Cook some of these recipes. Cook good food on the table. And make some sweet memories. Y'all come back here in a day or two and I'll have something else good to say and something else good for you to cook. I, I appreciate every one of you and hope you hang with me and let's make this channel grow. The good Lord bless you.